Assalamu alaikum viewers please like share and subscribe this channel links of pdf files used in this video are given in description so today's lecture is about metal nitrosyls and in this lecture we will mainly focus on different bonding situations of metallic nitrosyls in the previous lectures we have discussed metal carbonyls and considered carbonyl or carbon monoxide as a very strong ligand which may complex with metal similarly the nitrosyls or no also is a strong field ligand and makes a very stable complex with the metals so these complexes are called as metal nitrosyls so just like carbonyl we will see what is happening in this nitrosyl or no so this is nitrogen this is its valence shell electronic configuration which is 2s to 2p3 and this is valence shell electronic configuration written in the form of valence bond theory similarly the other atom is oxygen which has valence configuration of 2s to 2p4 and this is valence shell electronic configuration written in the form of valence bond theory so what is the bonding situation in this molecule so here we have written the valence shell electronic configuration of nitrogen and this is for oxygen so here we are seeing that this electron and this electron overlap with to form one bond and this and this form two bonds so there are actually two covalent bonds present between nitrogen and oxygen one is definitely a sigma and other is pi whereas the nitrogen contain one lone pair and one single electron which may be considered as free radical while oxygen contains two lone pairs so what will be the geometry or shape of this molecule so this is the overall geometry or shape of this molecule in which nitrogen contains one lone pair and one single electron of free radical whereas oxygen contains two lone pair and there are actually two bonds between nitrogen and oxygen one is sigma and one is pi now we we have discussed uh, previously the bonding situation in terms of how many electron pairs are there on uh, separate atoms and how many bonds are there now we will see what is the type of hybridization that exist on particularly nitrogen so again this is the bonding situation which we have discussed and now we will see what is the hybridization which is present in no molecule so again this is the complete configuration of nitrogen and this 2s2 2p3 is the valence electronic configuration of nitrogen and this is valence shell electronic configuration written in the form of valence bond theory similarly this is the complete configuration of oxygen whereas 2s2 2p4 is the valence shell electronic configuration and uh, here we have written this valence shell electronic configuration written in the form of valence bond theory now uh, the rule of hybridization is in case of two atoms only we will consider hybridization in one uh, atom whereas the other atom will be paired as it is so for the time being in this example i am taking nitrogen as central atom so the hybridization will take place only in nitrogen so here we are seeing that we have carried out hybridization in nitrogen now according to rules of hybridization uh, there are not pi bonds involved in the hybridization so it means we have to now decide from these valence uh, shell orbitals uh, how many orbitals have to be intermixed in order to undergo hybridization so if we see here yeah, we need one lone pair which has to be adjusted one single electron this and one sigma which is always involved in hybridization so basically we have to include these three species in hybridization whereas this pi bond does not involve in hybridization so for this purpose now one s and two p orbitals will intermix and undergo hybridization and this hybridization is actually sp2 hybridization which is according to the according to their mixing ratios as 1s and 2p orbitals are intermixing so total 3 atomic orbitals are mixing hence 3 uh, new hybrid orbitals will be formed and they will be in the same ratio as the mixing of atomic orbitals like 1 time s and 2 time p so here there is 1 time s and 2 time p and there are three such orbitals as in atomic orbitals you know, one orbital contain 
two electrons and other two electrons contain single single electron similarly the in the hybrid orbitals the electrons distribution will remain same this pz which is unhybridized orbital and it will remain as it is as it is not involved in hybridization similarly we will see what is happening in the oxygen this is its complete configuration this is its valence shell electronic configuration and this is its valence shell electronic configuration written in the form of valence bond theory now as the sp2 hybridization has been decided on this nitrogen which is acting as a central atom now orbitals will rearrange according to sp2 hybridization at an bond angle of 120 degree so if we are seeing here that one sp orbital here other sp orbital here and a third orbital is here and these all have arranged within one uh, angle of bond angle of 120 degree so one contain uh, this sp2 electrons this contain single electron and this orbital also contains single electron so as this already contains electrons and it will be a future lone pair this electron is a single electron and it will act as a future single electron whereas this electron it will overlap with the oxygen single electron now if we are seeing here that in oxygen there are two unpaired electrons so we will overlap one py orbital with this sp2 single electron and in this way a sigma bond is formed between nitrogen and oxygen and if we see here in this geometry or shape we have formed first sigma bond this lone pair has been adjusted here and this single electron is present here similarly now what is happening that as this pz is not involved in hybridization so we have written as it is and it contain a single electron it will overlap with the pz of oxygen and in this way both orbitals are joining above and below the plane containing the nuclei so a pi bond is formed so as it is here a pi bond has been formed so in this way if we are seeing in the oxygen this orbital ha electron has been consumed this also has been consumed so both have been consumed now these are two lone pairs so they will be retained as it is on the surface of oxygen atom so this is the overall geometry and shape of uh, this molecule and the hybridization on this nitrogen is sp2 hybridization just like metal carbonyls metal nitrosyls are also mostly neutral species but nitrosyls not exist as neutral no in metal nitrosyls but these actually exist in two forms either they exist in no negative form or either they exist in and no positive form if and no negative is present then why this and no negative is formed or how it is formed that matter loses one its its electron and this electron is gained by and no negative so in this form in this way metal has positive charge nitrosyl has negative charge and one lone pair is donated from nitrosyl to metal similarly in no positive form how this positive has come that one electron is lost by this nitrosyl molecule and it goes to metal so the lone pair which is present on no positive is donated towards the metal so either no in negative form or either no in po positive form the whole two uh, types of molecules are always neutral because of the respective charge balance on the metal atoms now here question arises that if the bonding between metal and nitrosyl is neutral then how we will identify that in a particular molecule the nitrosyl exists in no negative form or either it exists in no positive form as overall the both the species look neutral so in order to guess this let's we have a bonding situation of no negative so again this is the electronic configuration of uh, nitrogen and now as we have placed one negative charge so one negative charge is added on nitrogen by adding one extra electron in its valence shell so now the final configuration after addition of electron is 2s2 2p4 similarly this is the valence shell electronic configuration of oxygen uh, which is simply 2s2 2p4 now we see how the bonding situation exists between these two species so this is nitrogen in negative form this is oxygen neutral so again just like neutral and no two 
bonds are found one is sigma and other is pi only difference is that here we have now extra electron whereas in neutral anode there was only single electron at this place now what is the geometry or shape geometry or shape of this molecule will be remain same just like neutral and now the only difference is that now we have added this one charge here and now at this place one electron electron has been added now nitrogen has two lone pairs so this is the overall bonding situation of anno negative and if we draw um, its association with metal it looks like that it is a linear geometry and this is the ir value which is 1100 to 1200 per centimeter so at this stage we cannot decide either this geometry will be linear or it will be angular the geometry angle will be decided only after doing hybridization so what we will do next we will carry out this uh, bonding situation of no negative and we will draw its hybridization and uh, after then from its geometry and shape we will see either it is uh, its geometry is linear or angular now let's have the hybridization of this no negative so this is valence shell electronic configuration and after adding one extra electron it goes into 2s to 2p4 and this is the electronic configuration written in the form of valence bond theory this is valence shell electronic configuration of oxygen which is 2s to 2p4 now uh, here we are seeing that after adding one electron now there are two lone pairs which we have to adjust it in hybridization plus one sigma bond whereas high bond pi bond is not involved in hybridization so overall we have to adjust three species so what we will do we will hybridize one s and two p orbitals so in this way three sp2 orbitals are formed as uh, in the atomic orbitals two contain the electron pairs and one contains single electron so same electronic distribution will be in the hybrid orbitals this pz will remain as it is now uh, as the hybridization is sp2 so the sp hybrid orbitals will arrange in triangular planar form two orbitals contain lone pairs whereas one contain a sig single electron so this uh, single uh, electron pair will act as future lone pair whereas this lone pair will be adjusted towards the metal uh, this metal can also overlap here in this position in that case uh, this will act as lone pair so we can have place metal in any orbital as all are equal in size shape and energy so in this way now we have adjusted this lone pair and this electron pair which has been donated towards the metal now this is the sp2 single electron which is present here and we will overlap it with the py of oxygen so in this way a single sigma bond is formed between nitrogen and oxygen so in this way one orbital has been consumed uh, now remaining orbital is pz which is unhybridized and is placed here it will overlap with pz of oxygen to form a pi bond so in this way a second bond is formed now as we have seen in this bonding situation that all the orbitals of the nitrogen have been adjusted similarly all the uh, orbitals of the oxygen have been adjusted these are the two lone pairs which placed as it is on the oxygen so here if we are uh, seeing in this geometry actually now we understood that in anno negative there is no linear geometry there is actually an angular bond angle so if we are seeing here that this is the lone pair this is the bond between metal and nitrogen and these are the sigma and pi bonds of oxygen so what is the uh, indication of anno negative there are two indications one is ir frequency which appears at 1100 to 1200 per centimeter and second the bond between metal and nitrogen is angular and this angle is about 120 degree so if both these conditions are present then it means or it confirms that nitroside is present in anonegative form whereas there is positive charge on the metal